I'm a Spartan nurse. I'm a Spartan nurse. I am a Spartan nurse. Together, we can make a difference. I mean, the world a better place. I am a Spartan nurse. I am a Spartan nurse. Together, we will work to provide selfless, compassionate care to those most in need, no matter the circumstances. I am a Spartan nurse. I'm a Spartan nurse. I am a Spartan nurse. You know, it's a great new world for those in nursing. So no, even as classroom and workplace situations are constantly evolving, your fellow Spartan nurses will always have your back, and together we will transform healthcare. On behalf of the College of Nursing faculty and staff, I'd like to welcome you all to our uh, welcome all of our incoming pre-nursing students to Michigan State University. Uh, we begin the 2020 the 2020-2021 year during unprecedented times. And while we all continue to adjust, we ask that you be patient and allow us to grow as a community where we where we are able to support each other. Each and every one of us will come away from this experience stronger and wiser. While we, <clears throat> while we make this work, let's look forward to the future where we're able to meet each other face-to-face -face safely. Uh, today, we have quite a lineup. Um, we'll begin by introducing uh, you to the Office of Student Affairs, taking a quick virtual tour of our space on campus and going over a few important reminders. Then our guests will speak to you about navigating your journey here at MSU and beyond while taking advantage of some of the fantastic opportunities and very helpful services that they offer. While we hope all of you graduate from MSU with a degree in nursing, we want to help you find the right fit. Guests from Career Services will take, uh, will talk to you about navigating careers in healthcare to help you in, and to help you in developing and managing parallel plans. Um, the College of Nursing is also proud to offer our peer mentoring program to all pre-nursing, traditional BSN and accelerated students. So our peer mentors will be here today to talk to you about some tips for being successful in your pre-nursing track while also um, highlighting some of their services. Um, to meet the growing demand of, for nurses in the military, the College of Nursing has also partnered with the Army and our Air Force ROTCs to offer a limited number of students conditional admission to the traditional BSN program. Uh, representatives from each of those programs will talk more about the partnerships that they hold with us um, and additional opportunities within their respective programs. Finally, the Nursing Student Association uh, is the only organization for, um, is the only national organization for uh, students of nursing. The president of NSA will be here to discuss how the program can help you navigate your journey to the traditional BSN program um, and uh, professional development opportunities after you're admitted. So the Office of Student Affairs plays a number of roles within the College of Nursing, but perhaps most importantly, we are here to help you navigate the next four years of your life and beyond. Um, we offer one-on-one -on -one advising services to all pre-nursing and traditional BSN students, as well as our non-traditional BSN and graduate programs. Um, I'm Michael Zaborowski. I'm the Director of Student Affairs. I oversee operations for the office and get to supervise a am pretty amazing team of people. Um, Crystal, uh, would you like to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your role? Yes. Good morning, Spartans. My name is Crystal Jones. I am the Assistant Director of Student Affairs in the College of Nursing. I have the privilege of advising our traditional BSN students as well as all of our lovely pre-nursing students. And then I am also the lead advisor for our uh, students that are members of the Access Program. I am, we wish that we could welcome you all in person, but just for the time being, we're welcoming you all virtually and looking forward to meeting you all in person soon. Thanks, Crystal. Uh, Tara, how about you? 
Good morning, everyone. I'm Tara Gasecki, and I am the academic advisor for our traditional nursing students and pre-nursing students as well. Um, I also work with our nurse scholar students and our peer mentors. So it's very nice to meet you. I can't wait to see you all in advising appointments. Thank you both. So now, uh, usually uh, during colloquium, students get the opportunity to tour our building. Um, they get to meet our sim people and see the state of our state of the art equipment that we have available to our students. Um, we will welcome you to uh, to visit once the building is fully open. However, for now, um, the College of Communi uh, the College's communication team put together this short video to give you a quick tour of our facilities. So <clears throat> I'd like to end by going over a few very important reminders as you begin your uh, first semester as a pre-nursing student. So first, um, before you apply to the traditional BSN program, uh, you'll need to complete the following prerequisites. WRA 101, which is your uh, tier one writing requirement for the university, Math 103, or a waiver in the course, and that's your um, uh, college algebra, uh, Chem 141, general chemistry, uh, BS 161, cells and molecular biology, um, and anatomy 350, which is human anatomy. Um, you'll need to, you'll need to uh, maintain a 2.75 GPA or above to apply to the College of Nursing. You'll also need to have at least a 2.0 in each of your prerequisite courses. So please keep in mind, these are minimum requirements as we have more applicants than seats every uh, application pool. Uh, we encourage you to utilize resources on campus to put your best effort uh, into your academics. Um, you will not be eligible to apply to the college until the semester that you complete your final prerequisites. So <clears throat> for example, if next semester you're enrolled in BS 161 and Anatomy 350, um, and you've completed, you're taking this semester, the WRA, Math 103, and Chem 141, you'll be able to apply during the spring semester to be admitted in the fall. Um, finally, don't be afraid to ask for help. Your faculty, academic advisors, and a whole slew of resources are available here at MSU to help you succeed, even as we're in these virtual times. Um, if you don't know where to ask for help or find help, uh, the advisors and I are here to help guide you in the right direction. So make sure to come in and see us at least once a semester. Crystal and Tara um, will be available this week for some drop-in advising. If you have any questions about your schedule, uh, this wouldn't be a this wouldn't be an ideal time to think about your spring semester schedule. But definitely, as if you have any questions about your fall schedule, um, Crystal or Tara, would you mind uh, saying anything about your drop-ins this week? Sure, so an email was just sent yesterday evening um, that has a link to our Zoom Express advising appointments. They'll be held between two and four um, starting today through Friday. Um, so go ahead and just click on that link. Um, it's by, um, it's no appointment, it's just first come 
first serve, um, you'll be meeting with Laurel. And then once uh, there's availability in Crystallized room, Crystal or Ice room, uh, minor Crystal's room, sorry, um, Laurel will send you to us. Um, we do ask that these are for um, express appointments. So any questions that you have that can be answered in 10 minutes or less. Um, if you do have some more elaborate questions, we will have full advising appointments available as early as next week for you all. Thank you. All right, so with all that said, as you're navigating uh, Zoom over the next couple of hours, if questions come up for, for us in the Student Affairs Office or for our guests, please feel free to use the Q&A uh, feature that's at the bottom of the screen. Um, again, you can ask questions of us throughout the presentation, but as the guests are here, um, we'll make sure that uh, somebody's there to navigate any questions that you might have. So I'd like to welcome our first guests from career, the Career Services Network. Uh, Lauren Hinkle is a career advisor in our main career services hub here at Michigan State. Christy Coleman is the director of network programs and career education. And Krista Coleman is a career consultant with our friends over in, Lyman, in the Lyman Briggs College. Welcome. Thanks, Michael. Uh, this is Krista Coleman. Uh, as Michael had said, um, I am one of the career consultants here on campus in Lyman Briggs College. Um, and so with me today, I have my colleagues, Lauren Hinkle and Christy Coleman. Uh, we'll try to keep that straight for you. Um, but Lauren is going to kick us off here this morning. And it looks like we might be having just a little bit of technical trouble. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get us started then. Michael, can you make sure that Lauren and Christy are also unmuted, please? Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to... That's okay, Zoom has so many buttons. <laughs> Hi, Michael, I've been able to unmute, but I haven't been able to turn on my video or share screen. So while we're getting that sorted out, Lauren and I can talk just a little bit about what the Career Services Network is. Um, so I myself am a career consultant in Lyman Briggs College, which means that for the majority of the time, I work with students who are specifically in Lyman Briggs College. And what you'll find is that each of the colleges here on campus um, have a career consultant or somebody similar in that role um, who is able to help students specifically with uh, career challenges or any career questions that they may have as they're navigating their career path. Uh, and then we also have folks in our student services office, uh, like Lauren, who is our all majors career advisor. Uh, so Lauren, did you wanna talk a little bit about the work that you do with all students across campus? Yep, I sure can. And we were able to get the screen share going so we can jump into our presentation now. Um, so what we'll be talking about today, just like Krista said, is going to be basically like healthcare sciences. So nursing, of course, but also there's a lot of opportunities that exist within healthcare um, and within the health sciences. So what we're gonna be doing today is talking about nursing, but also talking about how we explore additional opportunities in health sciences and exploring multiple possibilities throughout the whole course of your college career. So just giving you some tips and tricks and tools to do that. So again, reintroducing everyone that's here, uh, like the warm introduction I was given by Michael and Krista. Uh, my name's Lauren Hinkle. So I am the career advisor within our Career Exploration Center. Uh, so I work with all majors as well as exploratory majors. You also got a wonderful introduction from Krista Coleman, who is our career consultant within Lyman Briggs College. Now there's another person you may not be hearing, um, but 
she is here. Uh, Christy Coleman is our Director of Network Partnerships and Career Education. So she will actually be within the chat. So if you have questions that you want to put in the Q&A or in the chat, uh, Christy will be there answering them throughout the presentation. She will also be sending links to various resources as we mentioned them throughout our time talking. Um, and if we have time at the end, we would love to answer some of your questions live, but we'll kind of see what time we have at the end. Um, but yeah, that is that is the three of us. So again, quick going into our services. So what is the Career Services Network and what do we do? So whether you're interested in selecting, again, a right major or looking at career fields, looking at industries, maybe you want on-campus work or part-time work, or maybe you're searching for an internship, maybe you have an interview, um, or you're not sure where to start with networking, anything along those lines, our team is here for you. So. One thing that we do offer is one-on-one -on -one advising appointments. So right now we're offering them over Zoom and phone. So you can set those up via a system called Handshake. So that is where we are located. We have one-on-one -on -one career advising appointments. We also have several career events. So right now we also have a fall um, webinar meeting series that are interactive webinars about different areas of, um, of career needs and virtual career needs. So we'll be covering those and those are all listed on Handshake and we also have um, various career fairs. So we plan a lot of the career fairs and employer networking events. Um, we also do a lot to help with um, managing, uh, discovering new career fields. So again, a lot of that career exploration piece. And we also have different ways to help find a job or internship and network. So we have things like a platform called MSU Connect, which we'll talk about in a little bit, which helps bring the Spartan community together with alumni and current students. Um, and we also help with the job search and the internship process. So those are just some of our services that we offer you. But again, pretty much anything career is something that we can help you with. So our first activity, um, I know some people say put away your phones, but I want you to take out your phones. So we're going to be doing something with Pull Everywhere uh, throughout this entire presentation. So definitely take a look at uh, getting onto that URL right there. So that's fullev.com slash MSU career SER 781. Or you can text MSU career SER 781 to 37607 to join. And so we're going to have a bit of a warm up activity here. So we'll answer a couple other questions. But this one is Is Sparty the best mascot in the Big Ten? All right. So, okay. So we got some right answers going on. So we see a yes for 100%, right? All right. Does anyone else have any different answers? Do we have any controversy? Okay, I'm not seeing anything super controversial just yet with Sparty. Okay, so we're all in agreement. Sparty's the best mascot in the Big Ten. Oh, we got who's Sparty? Oh, no. Don't worry. You have plenty of time throughout your college career to learn who Sparty is. So there's no judgment here. Perfect. Okay, well... Some of us agree and some of us aren't sure who Sparty is, which is totally fine. Don't worry. Again, you have plenty of time. So we're going to move on into another career-based question. So, true or false, the major I choose will be the most important thing to shape my career. Oh, we're seeing a battle. We've got true, false, true, false. It's changing with every answer. Oh, look at that. Well, so for the 74% of you, or 76, oh, it's changing so much. So the 76 to 77 to 74% that have been saying false, that is correct. So when we're taking a look at that, right? So when we're looking at the major that we choose, it's important. Don't get me wrong. It can be important because it can help you learn a lot of things about yourself, your interests, and diving deeper into your field. So your major is, of course, important. But there are a lot of other aspects of our life that contribute to how we shape our career. It's also about what are the additional experiences outside of the classroom. It's about um, some of the people that we connections that we build throughout the rest of our throughout the rest of our college career. So a lot of things outside of our major also contribute to this. Um, and again, like about 24% of students are in a career that is directly and completely related to their field. So that might mean, for example, if you majored in psychology, maybe 24% actually become psychologists. However, what we do see is that people become 
something that is related to their major, but maybe isn't the one traditional thing you might see. All right, so we're gonna go on to the next question. How many full-time significant jobs do I think I'll have after graduation? So full-time significant jobs I think we'll have after graduation or until we retire. Okay, so I'm seeing some zero to four. We're seeing some five to eight. All right, the change is growing. We have a couple over in C. All right, guys, are you ready to be shook? Here we go. It's actually C. C is the correct answer. So 1% of you guys got it, um, which is okay. This is kind of our surprising statistic. This is something that usually when I tell students, they're, they're very surprised. So I was expecting about 1% to 3%. Oh, now, now people know, so now they're going up to 5%. But this is something that is significant. So on average, based on recent research, it's about 12, so 10 to 14, so 12 on average. Uh, this surprises a lot of people because this is different from the norm that maybe our parents or guardians or teachers have experienced, um, where maybe they had one job or two jobs that they held on to for a good 20 to 30 years. Um, that is not as much the case now. Um, oftentimes we see average job tenure is about four to five years. And when you're under 30, sometimes it's closer to two years. Uh, so that's kind of what we're seeing. Additionally, there might be some jobs that will exist in your lifetime that don't exist right now. For example, social media marketing was not a field a few years ago. And now you hire people in companies specifically to navigate social media marketing and using Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. So a lot of times we might have a uh, full-time significant job that fits our interest perfectly, but doesn't exactly exist at this current time. So yeah, there's a lot of opportunity for transition and growth not just in college, but after you graduate college and throughout your career. All right, well, another one. There is only one perfect career out there for me. So is that true or false? Okay, so we've got some true, we've got some false. All right, so you are correct if you answered false. So that's one thing that I think puts a lot of pressure on us when we're exploring careers, right? So when we're hearing that we have to find our dream job, our perfect life, our perfect career, and we have to find it in college, that can really hurt us. And that can cause us to be afraid to look at different options because what if it's the wrong one you put in quotations? What if it's the wrong one? But if we're getting out of the mindset of there's only one perfect thing out there for me, it can really help us to feel more open to exploring additional options or things that might interest us even more. And sometimes something might be perfect right now, and then we might realize and learn more about ourselves in the future and realize maybe it's not as perfect as it used to be. And that's totally normal and okay too. So again, there isn't only one perfect, there may be multiple excellent things out there for you as you grow and change and transition. All right, so this is, I believe our last one. So most first year students know exactly what they want to do after college. Most first year students, so students like yourselves must know exactly what they wanna do after college. So I'm seeing a lot of false, seeing a lot of false. So, oh, we got one, a couple trues, there we go. So what we usually say is, is typically it's false, right? So it's easy to compare yourselves to other folks that are starting off their first year of college too. Because maybe some people do have a really clear idea and that's okay, but it's also normal to maybe not have so clear of an idea or kind of be in exploratory space. That's a completely fair and normal thing to be experiencing. So it's not wrong either way, but that's something that it can also hinder the exploration is comparing ourselves to others. What we've seen is about 70% of MSU students change their major at least once throughout the time they are in college. So that's 70%, that's a pretty big majority, right? So again, like you might know right now and you might change and that's okay too. Um, and or you might have people that know what they want to do right now and they continue with that throughout the entire time they're in college. These are all things that are normal and okay, but what we don't want to do is compare ourselves to others. We want to allow ourselves to take ownership of where we are in an exploratory sense. 
So what are some of the problems we're going to be addressing today? The big thing is what we just addressed were some things called dysfunctional beliefs. So these are things that maybe or rules that we impose upon ourselves that keep us stuck and keep us from wanting to explore. Like, oh, I have to have it figured out right now. Or I have to pick a perfect career that I'm going to love for the rest of my life. You know, that is something that can be dysfunctional because it can keep us from wanting to explore or learn. So the goal today is to reframe those dysfunctional beliefs. So reframing mindset to help us align with those realities that we just talked about, you know, those 10 to 14 jobs, the 70% of students that change their major, the 24% that are in careers that directly relate. So we're going to allow ourselves to reframe and kind of think about some beliefs outside of that mindset. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Krista. Great. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, so we're thrilled to be here with all of you this morning. And as Michael had said early on, we're really hopeful that all of you will graduate from the College of Nursing uh, if that's what you decide to do. But also if you decide that that's not what you want and you find it's not a great fit, or I saw some questions in the Q&A saying, you know, I'm thinking about changing my major. That's all completely, totally normal um, and totally okay. So for example, when I started college, I thought I wanted to be an architect. Uh, so I was going to design buildings. I thought I was going to do residential design, uh, build houses, things like that. Uh, and now I work in higher education and I love it. And I can't imagine any other career pathway um, that didn't involve working with college students or helping folks to find what they're passionate about. Um, and so I think it just goes to show that you can really be doing one thing and then find that there's something else that you really love and you're really passionate about. Um, and so for a lot of you, that passion may still be in the health sciences. Uh, so these types of careers take many different forms, um, but in general, they appeal to students who enjoy science, um, as I'm sure that many of you do. Uh, and often these folks also have a passion for helping others, whether that be people or animals, uh, anybody who really, uh, really just wants to help improve the quality of life for other beings. People in these professions are curious, they're empathetic, they're critical thinkers, um, and again, they're driven to help other folks. All of these things definitely apply to the nursing profession, but they apply broadly across the board to a variety of career paths along the same type of theme. Uh, so we'll next get into what some of those other career pathways might be um, if you find that maybe nursing isn't the right fit or you're just looking to try something a little bit different. And then if we can go ahead and flip to the next slide, please, Lauren. Thank you. Great. So some of those career pathways, again, um, they could include being a nurse, but they could also include becoming a doctor, becoming a researcher. This is something that, especially in Lyman Briggs, we find that a lot of our students end up going into research or becoming a lab scientist uh, just because they really enjoy the science and research aspect of their coursework. So while they originally came in thinking that they wanted to be doctors, um, they find something else within their work, uh, within the college, in labs, and other classes. Uh, that's something that's really exciting to them that they want to pursue in their career. And so it's important to remember that we're only exposed to so many career options before we get to college, right? So we've likely all been to a doctor's office, and we've seen a doctor, and we've seen a nurse. Um, you know, Maybe even at some point in our lives, we've seen a therapist. So we have an idea of what those careers look like. And so it's easy to name that this is a career path, that this is a profession that I'm interested in because I've seen it done. Whereas there are other careers that maybe we don't see in our everyday lives so often, right? So like a researcher, a lab scientist, um, a dietitian. So those are things that you may consider once you are able to get some familiarity with them um, and they employ the same skill sets that you might have found in nursing um, or other health sciences categories that you were more familiar with. And so we'll go ahead and move to the next slide. Uh, so as Christy is mentioning in the chat, we have a lot of different resources for you to utilize as you do your career exploration. So for those of you, as Christy had mentioned, who are really curious about what else might be out there, we have some career assessments that you can take. Uh, you can talk to a career advisor about that and they can provide some support in terms of what might be right for you. Um, generally, the Career Network website is going to be a great resource. There's a whole section under interest areas about the health sciences. And so a lot of that is going to cover some of the material we talked about this morning. Uh, and then just also give you some other ways to explore careers in that area and to help you decide which pathway might be the best for you. In addition to those, we have specific resources where you can learn more about those career pathways. 
One of them, for those of you who are visual learners like me, uh, Candid Career is a video website uh, where you can watch videos of folks who are in different professions talking about what it is they do, how they got into the work that they're doing, what, uh, what a normal day looks like for them maybe. And so this can be a great resource for those of you who are really just unsure about what another profession might look like um, and how you might navigate that. So Candid Career is great for that. ONET um, is a little bit more of the data-driven side. So for those of you who like to see the numbers, who like to see in black and white, what are the skills that you need to have this job? What are the educational requirements? What does the salary look like? What is the career forecast? So what do hiring experts foresee for the future for those jobs? ONET is a great resource for that. Um, and so I see Christy is dropping those in the chat right now. Thank you, Christy. Uh, so all of you can go ahead and click on those links and just save them for later um, after we're done with colloquium this morning. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next slide. Uh, yes, so MSU majors related to health sciences. This is just a sampling. And so one of the things that we'll talk a lot about this morning is this idea of parallel planning um, or just knowing that the first path that you chose doesn't have to be the path that you pursue. Um, and so oftentimes students may choose a major that ends up being different from what they decide to do after college. So even if you were to pursue a degree um, on this list, uh, you might end up doing something a little bit different. Maybe you go into medical sales. Um, likewise, you might choose a degree that's not even on this list and find your way into a medical program um, or into the health sciences field in a different way. So remember that major doesn't always equal career. Um, and this list is really meant to be a sampling to give you an idea of what some of those possibilities are. And actually later this semester, um, the Career Services Network will be offering a webinar um, several times with different alumni panels where folks will just talk about the career path that they took um, specifically when their major did not relate to their career after college. So just remember that just because you pick it now doesn't mean that you're stuck with it forever. It doesn't mean that that's the only thing that you can do. Uh, you have a lot of transferable skills that you can get from any MSU major. And um, we just wanna make sure uh, that you remember that your options are open no matter what you decide to do. And again, as Lauren had mentioned before, uh, more information about that, more information about career services events can be found on Handshake, uh, which I think we'll also be dropping the link to in the chat. So next we're gonna do another activity. We're trying to keep it interactive this morning. We know uh, that you'll be hearing from a lot of really great folks today, but we wanted to start your morning off um, with some activity. So uh, knowing the direction before your destination is important, right? So we need to know where we wanna go before we can get there. And so sometimes finding a career can be a lot like finding north on a compass. Um, you have to evaluate where am I? So in relation to true north, where am I standing and what direction do I need to turn to get to true north? Um, it's important to find your center. Um, and so in the same way that you would find it on a compass, you can find your true north by creating your own compass, which is what you see on the screen right now. Um, the compass that we're gonna talk about today is the career compass. Uh, and so it's made up of skills and abilities, passions and interests, societal needs, and work and life values. So to begin, we're gonna ask everyone to take out a piece of paper. It can just be a scrap piece of paper if it's blank on the back. Um, you can divide it up into four sections. Uh, likewise, you can also use, if you have sticky notes by you or just little note cards, just pick up four of them. Um, and then Lauren's gonna talk a little bit about what this activity looks like, but hopefully it'll give you a better idea of maybe what of, what of your interests um, and things that you're passionate about can help you to define your true north um, as you begin your career exploration as well. Yeah, so I'll kind of dive in and start explaining it um, even further. Uh, so again, like if you want four note cards, four sticky notes, or just divide a piece of paper into four spaces, we're gonna do a little bit of practice of kind of some self-discovery. And this is something we can also continue to talk about in advising appointments and things along those lines. So what we're gonna be giving you are four different word banks. I'll be giving you a minute and a half to look over the word banks and write down words um, that you feel are most reflective of or important to you. And you can write down additional words that relate to it if you like. You don't have to go with the word bank that we give you, but you can add additional words. 
And at the end of the minute and a half, try and choose or circle a top three words from each of those compass quadrants as we talk about. So for example, if we were to do skills and abilities um, and you write down words that are meaningful to you and reflective and important to you, uh, then you would circle three words in those skills and abilities that would relate the most to you that you feel like are in your top three. Um, if you don't wanna do a top three, you can do a top four or five, but definitely wanna narrow it down to like a close to a top three. So for our first section, I'm gonna give you skills and abilities. So while we look over this, I'm gonna give you a timer and I'm gonna read you some prompts to kind of help you guide your thinking and think through how this relates to you. So I'll start our timer right here. All right. So with skills and abilities, what are some of your unique skills or knowledge? What experiences have you had in college or high school that gave you unique skills or insights? So it could be like a club, a program, a training you were part of. What education, either traditional or non-traditional, you know, perhaps from like a friend or a family member or a neighbor, what traditional or non-traditional education do you have? What do you know inside and out? What do maybe other people ask you for help with? What experiences have you had that maybe have given you insights or information that most others maybe don't have? What are these insights? What are three things that maybe your best friends or your mentor or a parent or guardian would agree you are best at? What's your role in a group? Are you an entertainer, an organizer, a leader? What have you learned for your jobs? Things that you would put on a resume or things that you wouldn't. All right, we got five more seconds. All right, so that's our skills and abilities. So try and circle or think of a top three words in this particular category. And we're gonna move on to passions and interests. So same story, minute and a half, and I'm going to read you some prompts as you go through this. All right, time starting now. So when are you your happiest in life? So these are the things that you enjoy doing or learning about, passions and interests. What motivates, excites, inspires, or engages you most in your life? What do you find yourself thinking about in your free time? What are maybe some of your favorite things to do on the weekend or maybe a day off? What are you doing when you find yourself in that flow state? So a state where you're totally engaged and time maybe just flies by. What are you doing? When you think of topics that interest you, what comes to mind? What do you spend time researching online? What did you love to do in high school? What were your favorite subjects or favorite activities throughout your high school career? When you think of beautiful activities, settings, environments, or situations, what comes to mind? What would you pay to learn more about? What kinds of stories resonate with you? All right, that's the end of our time for passions and interests. So pick a top three if you can. And we're gonna go on to societal needs. All right, so this is issues you want to address and people you wanna help. All right. When you think of issues that move you, what comes to mind? What do you care about in the news? How would you like to help make the world a better place? What kinds of jobs do you feel are undervalued in our culture? If you could snap your fingers, 
and maybe instantly change one thing about the world, what would you change? What makes you proud to be on the planet? So if an alien were to come from outer space, what would you most want to show them or explain to them? When you think of maybe something that you feel might be broken in the world or something that you would want to see fixed, what do you think comes to mind? Or what parts of the world maybe hurt your heart? Or what parts of the world make your heart happy? All right, our last few seconds, so wrap up and we'll be doing our last section. All right. And now the last one. So this is our work-life value. So these are ideas or commitments that shape your life and shape your decisions. So a lot of like personal values and beliefs centering on work and life. So one more minute and a half. What kinds of things are most important to you? Maybe think about a big decision you've made. What were some of the primary deciding factors for you? How would you like to be remembered by others? What kinds of characteristics do you value in a good friend, a mentor? What ideas or thoughts make your heart beat faster, whether because you're so deeply compelled or you're overjoyed by them. What are some similar qualities in the people that you consistently find yourself drawn to? If you were starting an organization or a project, what values would you shape it around? When your inbox is full, either text or email, what do you always open first? What organizations or individuals are they from? What are the topic of these texts or emails? All right, we're in our last 10 seconds and then we'll be moving on to some applications of this activity. All right, find our top three, some of those. All right, great job everybody. So we're gonna be moving on into, how do we use these words, right? So now we have these lists of words and we're sitting here going, okay, well, what do we do with these? So this is gonna be focusing on how do we take the compass activity and maybe those guiding words that we thought about, and how do we kind of combine them into something that can make sense for a dream life we might want or a potential future that we might be considering. So what we're gonna do is kind of talk about a career brainstorm activity that you can do and you can do it with friends or family or mentors or teachers or with a career advisor. So an example we have here is this person decided to combine about five words that were from each of their categories. So they pulled from their societal needs, the work-life values, the passions and interests, the uh, skills and abilities, and they combined these five words. So they picked like five words out of each of their top three. So they did teens, social justice, art, travel, coaching. So they picked these five words. So we'll be going back to our person in just a second. So maybe you pick out your top three and you have some of your top three and you have those circled. So what we can do is maybe give that sheet to someone that you trust, some of those words that you circled. Have them review that sheet and maybe write down as many careers or majors that they think could connect. And it's important to do this with a few people. You can do this with a career advisor. You can do this with a friend. You can do this with um, a teacher that you're really close with or a family member that you really trust. Um, give them a sheet and see how many careers or majors they can connect. You can even make it a competition, see who can think of the most. Then when you get that back from that person, try to review the career and major suggestions given to you and maybe consider circling some suggestions that maybe confirm some of your prior ideas. So maybe you see some that you're like, oh yeah, totally. Like I knew that I would be suggested to do this because it makes sense to me. But you can also underline maybe some ideas that seem new and interesting. So they might suggest something that's out of your comfort zone or something you didn't think about before. 
So try and underline some ideas that seem new and interesting and you'd want to learn more about. Again, this allows us to go into some of that career exploration state that removes us from some of those dysfunctional beliefs that keep us stuck in one way of thinking. So kind of crowdsourcing and getting some ideas from other people can really help. So to remind you again of our person, what we're gonna do is we're going to help this person out. So we're gonna do this activity for this human being. So remember pull everywhere? Well, we're back. Uh, so this is gonna be, what are some ideas for majors or careers for this person? So if we're looking at teens, coaching, art, social justice or travel, try and put in a response. So if you enter one word answers, it should populate into the system, which would be really cool. So again, what are some ideas? We see art teacher, perfect. So we're looking at teens, coaching, art, social worker, great. Look at all these possibilities showing up. We have lawyer, a few other people say social worker. Motivational, oh great, therapist, yup, counselor, art, mentor. Educator, so a lot of education. Do you see how many possibilities show up for this person just from what we're saying right now? We're seeing, again, speakers, a school counselor, Peace Corps. And this is just based off of five words. Can you imagine if we looked at even more words for this person, how many possibilities we could think of? Yeah, center agency. Got yeah, trainer, nonprofit work, that's great. Look at all of you thinking of all these amazing ideas, a travel guide, freelance work. This is great. And then yeah, if you repeat certain words other people said, it grows larger in the word cloud. So now we're seeing teacher and coach, counselor, therapist are being repeated a lot. But we're seeing a lot of, so the good thing about this and something that I think really resonates with nursing students especially is a lot of y'all are interested in this because you want to help, right? You want to help people and you want to be in a space that can help make the world a better place in health. But look at all of these possibilities that we can do to help other people. Look at all of these options that we can have to help people and to grow and develop society in a way that we love. So these, some of these are healthcare related, some of these aren't, and that's okay, but these are all helping professions. All right, thank you all for helping brainstorm. So what we're gonna talk about next is going to be how many lives are inside of us? So what are some different lives that we can explore? So Krista mentioned earlier in the presentation, parallel planning. And so how do we do parallel planning? Well, what we wanna do is brainstorm alternative futures. So these are, I recommend starting with a two-year plan. Um, and then if you want, you can develop into like a five-year plan, but we always recommend starting with two years. So it's looking at three different alternative futures for you. So that's kind of what parallel planning is, is focusing on what are some additional things that I love just as much as my current plan that I can take a look at or explore even further. So when we're trying to put this together, we wanna to put at least one personal and one professional milestone per year if we're trying to build like a potential plan. And we also recommend sketching in maybe some graphics if you like drawing, um, as well as writing words, because uh, sometimes it disengages um, other parts of creativity. So when you're making a timeline, and again, you can do this with our career advisors. We can help walk you through this and how to build some of these parallel plans. Um, and you can take this back to maybe talk through with an academic advisor. You can talk it through with a friend or a mentor or someone close to you to kind of get their opinions on it. So we want to make sure that this incorporates major milestones. So not, I brushed my teeth today, or I took a walk outside. We want it to be bigger things like I adopted a dog or I join a club or I have a academic goal. So we want to have this incorporate personal, academic, and professional because your whole life is not going to be just about your work, right? It's going to be also about what are the things you want to achieve in your personal life, you know? Do you want to move to a certain area of the country or a different country? Do you want to... Um, do you want to have a pet? Do you want to have kids? Do you want to have anything along those lines? Uh, that allows us to incorporate a more holistic piece within our life, personal, academic, and professional. And then try to think of at least one per year. 
So this is an example of someone's current plan uh, who's a nursing student. So they drew some pictures. So we see some cute pictures. So some of the things that we notice, for example, is starting at MSU, maybe their first goal is to join NSA. So get that nursing student organization, so that pre-nursing club. And maybe they, a goal they have is to get admitted to the BSN program. That's great. They also have other goals talking about like, okay, I want to adopt a greyhound. So we see that as an end goal, not just being a nurse, but also adopting a greyhound. And they want to move to Traverse City by their senior year. So once they, once they graduate, they want to move to Traverse City. So they want to kind of move up north. They want to do an internship with Veterans Affairs. And they have some different focuses that they want to look at as far as nursing too. So they want to explore that. So that's an example of what a parallel plan can look like. So when we're looking at three versions, so that was just a first idea. That was the story that you tell today. But the other two we wanna talk about is what's an equally great plan? So if for some reason we can't do the first plan, what's an equally great one? So what's something that we're equally excited about? So maybe our current story is nursing, but maybe we're equally excited about doing, let's say, social work in a hospital setting, which is a possibility. Um, social work is a really wide field, so maybe we really like value counseling and we want to work in a hospital setting, but maybe in a different way. Another thing is this, the third plan is a wild idea. So this is if money didn't matter, if resources didn't matter, if maybe the opinions of others didn't matter, what would you do? What would that look like for two or five years? What would we want to incorporate into that wild idea plan? And I think that one is one of the most important ones to look at because again, it removes those, those barriers that we talked about, those dysfunctional beliefs. Because we don't have to think about, oh, what will this person think? Or will I have the resources for this? Or things along those lines. It just allows you to just have ideas and just think openly. And then you can bring it to a career advisor. And what I see oftentimes is that the wild ideas that we think are wild actually end up being super doable. So bring your wild ideas to us. We would love to see them and we can definitely see some ways that we can even make that work if you so want it. So again, we're drawing this out. We're thinking this through. We have like worksheets that we can give to you as career advisors. We can talk about this in advising appointments. But I would really recommend as you know, you're starting your first year and thinking this through, think about these three ideas, the story we tell today. So what is the current plan of the story that we would tell today? But what's an equally great plan that we would also love to do? And what's a wild idea plan, something that seems really interesting to us that we could accomplish? And then finally, when you're looking at these parallel plans, it's important to kind of take a pulse on how we really feel about them. So actually thinking about different components of the plans that we build and how do we really feel about them? So for example, resources, do we feel like we have people in our corner or the competencies or tech or materials or even money available to do that plan? So kind of assessing it and rating it and thinking about that. Next is do we even like it, right? That's a huge important thing. Does it feel like we really like it or does it just kind of seem okay or that we're just going through the motions or do we not like it at all? The next is how confident do we feel about this? Do we feel like it will work? Sometimes it's yes, I absolutely think this will work. Maybe after you meet with a career advisor, you feel okay, we explained some possibilities, it feels like it works. Or maybe you feel like it's a kind of a maybe or maybe you feel it's doubtful. Maybe you're saying, I don't know if this will work for me. And then the last one is focusing on coherence. So what I usually suggest when you're thinking about if something aligns with you, go back to that compass activity we just did. Look at those words that we circled. Look at those words we selected. Do, does it fit those words? Do we feel it's authentic? Do we feel it fits us? And not just something that we should do. Does it feel like it's your voice and who you are? Or does it feel like it's something that others want you to achieve? Or it's something you feel like you're supposed to achieve? Um, so does it feel like the real authentic you? So with that, I'm just going to pass it back over to Krista to relate it back to health sciences and do another closing activity. So get ready for another poll everywhere.
Great, thanks, Lauren. Hopefully that activity was helpful as you're uh, imagining those different possibilities, those different career pathways, what your life could look like in a couple of years. Um, I know sometimes it's hard to get out of the mindset of this is what I had planned and this is what I thought it would look like. Uh, but I think especially when we go to college, sort of letting go of those expectations and just uh, learning from our experiences can be the best way to determine a path forward. Um, and so some of those experiences in a traditional setting uh, in health sciences would look like this, right? So clinical experiences, maybe lab or research work, uh, doing some targeted volunteering, doing medical scribing, uh, all of these become a bit more complicated in the setting that we're in right now with COVID-19. And so I saw many of you asking in the Q&A about um, maybe what does volunteerism look like in the age of COVID-19? How do I still make myself stand out on an application given the challenges that we're having right now? And so I think for one, it's important to remember that everybody is having this challenge, right? And so as we go and apply, uh, for nursing school, um, for my students in Briggs, it's for medical school. Uh, they have to think a little bit differently, a little bit more creatively about what this could look like. Uh, one of the things I would say is that there are still volunteering opportunities. They might just be a little bit different than what you had thought about before. Uh, and so you can check in with our Center for Community Engaged Learning. Uh, and I can drop that uh, link in the chat a little bit later. Uh, they do have some online or virtual volunteer opportunities. Uh, for you if you're looking to still volunteer during your time in undergrad, ways that you can still be connected with the community even though we're not on campus. Some other things you may consider doing would be what we would call informational interviews. Uh, and any of the career advisors would be happy to chat with you about that, about what it could look like. Um, but to give you a general idea, there are a couple of resources we can recommend um, when it comes to that. So informational interviewing is talking to folks in industry whose job you'd maybe like to have someday, who have had experiences similar to yours that you would like to talk to um, just to learn about what their career pathway has looked like. Uh, and so two ways you can do that are through the MSU Connect platform and through LinkedIn. Uh, so here in the chat in a second too, thank you, Christy, for keeping up with all of those. Um, you'll see a link for MSU Connect. And this is uh, sort of like a LinkedIn page, so a networking site specifically for folks in the MSU community. So students, alumni, faculty and staff, um, some non-alumni mentors who are career partners, um, employer partners, have joined the site to help students to uh, navigate their career pathways. So what does it look like when you graduate and you wanna start applying for jobs? Um, it's really important to have those conversations early on and you can do the same thing on LinkedIn. Uh, so you can go online, you can go to the Michigan State University LinkedIn page, and under the alumni section, you can sort by careers, um, you can sort by major, and find alumni who have pursued a career path that you'd like to pursue. Um, and so the nice thing about this is that as you begin to make these connections early on um, in your first or second year of college, um, then by the time you know we're looking at a landscape that is hopefully a little bit more normal um, in the coming months and years, You've already made those connections with Spartan alumni to be able to do some of what you see on the screen here. So getting clinical experience, doing lab or research work, um, or even make sure uh, that you're uh, getting chances to job shadow. So maybe following someone at work, uh, just seeing what they do on a day-to-day -day basis to see if that would interest you. So these are all ways that you can get experience related to the health sciences, um, even though things look a little bit different right now than we had hoped they would. So we're gonna move into a little bit of wrap up as Lauren had mentioned. Um, so I want you to just think about some takeaways from today. So I know that we've covered a lot just in the last 40 minutes or so. You're gonna get a lot more information today. Um, but if you had to say, you know, this was my one takeaway from the career services presentation, what would it be? Um, and you can either just write that down for yourself or you can pop it in the, in the chat if you'd like to share with all of us, we'd love to hear it. Um, so this is maybe one thing you learned today um, or maybe a goal or next step. So maybe you learned about a different career pathway that you hadn't thought about before. Um, maybe you're setting a goal or a next step of meeting with a career advisor or an academic advisor to talk about some options that you think might sound interesting to you. So again, you're welcome to share that in the chat if you'd like, but maybe just write it down on a piece of paper, something to go back to this semester, um, you know, when you are running into some trouble when you're thinking about some different options you know what is this one next step that you could take to um, start your career exploration 
So as Lauren mentioned, we have a couple polls to wrap us up. Um, so first one is true or false. I can only have one career plan in college. Great, so I already see a lot of false answers. So I'm so glad to see that you've all been listening and engaging with us to see um, that that's absolutely right. Uh, that you can have many career plans, um, that in fact, you might even develop different career plans after you graduate, uh, that things can always look a little bit different based on the experiences that you've had, um, based on uh, folks that you meet, you might find some new opportunities that you had never expected to find. So great, we'll go ahead and move on to the next poll. True or false, there are many options in health sciences that are not nursing or doctors. Great, and I already see a lot of true answers. Okay, so a couple of false, um, but right, this is going back to that first career pathway slide we had talked about in the beginning. Uh, so there are many different options. Uh, we could become veterinarians, we could become researchers or lab scientists. There are lots of different options, lots of different ways for us to explore the sciences, to help others, um, to use our empathy and critical thinking skills. Uh, in careers that are beyond the things that we've been exposed to um, in our early uh, childhood or adult life, right? So beyond careers that we've seen in person, uh, we can still um, engage in the health sciences in new and different ways. And uh, now I'll turn things over to Lauren, I think, for another poll. All right, so this is one of the last ones is, who can help me make a parallel plan? So do we think it's career advisors, family, friends, mentors, academic advisors? Do we think all of them can contribute to this? All right, so I'm seeing 99% are all of the above. And I also see that we're including career advisors, which is great. Either way, it shows that you're listening. So we do say all of the above because of course, career advisors, we can kind of help with starting that process and building and giving you some practical solutions, but you can also crowdsource from your friends, your family, your mentors, or even academic advisors. You could ask for some of their suggestions as well. So that's also a possibility for you too. And then after this session, do you feel like you're more inclined to make a parallel plan? Do you think we're more likely or maybe feeling more like we might make a parallel plan or think about it? Yeah, so I'm seeing some yeses, but I'm also seeing some maybes, which is totally fine. And we also see some no's, and that's okay too. Totally okay, so yeah. So we feel a yes, a no, and a maybe, which makes complete sense. So if, even if we're on the maybe, or even if we're in the no space, that's totally okay. And maybe, you know, you might have a situation in life where you're not really needing a parallel plan, that's totally fine but it's always good to at least keep it in consideration of, hey, you know, what are some other things that I might like out there? Do I feel like it's something that is worth my time to make a parallel plan? And again, you can always just meet with a career advisor to see if it's worthwhile for you or if there's something that you feel uh, ties in well to do while you're also doing nursing, that can be great too. That way, so you can have a really great, well-rounded college experience, regardless whether we do nursing or we do something else. So we're gonna be wrapping up, but one of the big things we wanna make sure you do is stay connected with us. So of course we mentioned Handshake a few times, and I know Christy uh, linked that in the chat, so thank you, Christy. But that's how you not only meet with us, so you can sign up for career appointments with us, um, you can also sign up for those events. So I know that um, Krista mentioned some of those alumni panels that we had coming up. So it's called, uh, You Majored in What? Uh, and what's cool about it is it talks about um, people that majored in certain things and did something completely different than their major. So that's gonna be a really cool event, but we have a whole fall series um, of different things like marketing yourself and creating your digital brand, um, navigating virtual interviews and using those virtual platforms to have an interview, um, navigating virtual career fairs. Um, and speaking of career fairs, we also have our career fairs and signing up for those are also on, on our Handshake system. So if you're ever interested in seeing those, all of that's kind of on Handshake as a one-stop shop. Um, also, again, please make sure to use our website. So careernetwork.msu.edu. Um, so again, Chris did a great job of mentioning all of the resources that exist there. So that Candid Career, um, we have links to it in our 
website. And we also have that interest area within the health sciences. So if you're wanting to explore some of those health sciences, please do so on our website. And also, if you want to follow us on Insta, we love it. Um, so we're at MSU underscore career services. So we post a lot about our, our events and um, what other people are doing and things along those lines. And we also have different career tips that we show up every Tuesday. So if you want to follow us on Instagram, we would love to have you be a follower. All right. So we're a little bit ahead of schedule. So if, uh, if we wanted to answer some questions, Kristen, Christy, we can, or we can turn it over. Yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions if there was anything in the Q&A that came up that was specifically career focused. Um, I know everybody's got a lot of questions about all kinds of stuff right now, right? Um, especially as we're entering our first year of college, there's a lot of unknowns, um, just wanting to get some specific information. So uh, Chrissy, had you seen anything in the Q&A or in the chat pop up um, that we might want to specifically address at this time? I didn't see anything um, specific that came up in the chat room that was career based. Well, awesome. Well, oh, we have one. Okay, we had one question about like, do references have to be from specific people or places? Um, so we'll just quick address that one. So with references, oftentimes you might consider having it be, and it kind of depends on what field you go into. So you might consider having it be a former supervisor at a job or a close colleague or mentor um, that was maybe slightly above you in a role. So that's a good option to use as a reference. Um, or if you volunteered somewhere, it doesn't have to be a job. It could be a volunteer coordinator. So if you volunteered somewhere. Um, so those are some options you can use as references. Um, or again, people that just know you well and can speak to your skills and abilities that relate to the position that you're applying for. Um, Krista, do you have anything else to contribute to that? Nope, I think you covered it. Thanks, Lauren. Awesome. Well, if there are any other questions, those are our emails right there. So feel free to reach out to us via email or you can message us on Handshake. Um, we'd love to uh, continue a conversation with you or have an appointment with you. So all of us are available to chat with you um, after this session and beyond. So thank you all for giving us your time and I will give it back over to you, Michael. Thank you so much. And thank you all for um, your contribution. I, I think this was really, really great. Um, uh, I'm very excited to introduce our peer mentors. Alexis and Julia have worked with Tara over the past year to really enhance the peer mentoring program and the services offered, especially uh, during the beginning of the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, today, they'll talk to you about succeeding at MSU and how to take advantage of their resources. Uh, Tara, Alexis, and Julia, uh, the, the students may use the Q&A um, to ask questions if you would like to monitor, the, monitor that and answer questions as they arise. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, our peer mentor program um, in the College of Nursing. So we're very excited to share this um, amazing resource with you all. Um, before we get started in our presentation, there have been a lot of questions regarding when students can apply to the traditional BSN program. Um, so the short answer is once you are in the semester of completing the prerequisite classes and a total of 28 credits, you can apply for a potential start the following semester. So that will be different for every student. Um, some of you will be completing prerequisites in the spring to apply for a fall 2021 start. Um, and some of you will be finishing your prerequisites in the fall 2021 semester for a potential spring 2022 start. And some of you may have brought in transfer credit to apply for a potential spring 2021 start. Um, so if you are really not sure on when you're able to or eligible to apply to the program, you can stop by in Express Advising today and we can go over that really quickly with you as well. Um, just to give you a quick run through of what your pre-nursing phase will look like and the timeline for you to apply to the program. Um, but at this time, I am going to turn it over to Julia and Alexis. They're going to explain to you what the peer mentor program is, how they can help you, and they're also going to address some of the questions that you all have submitted in the pre-nursing survey. So thank you all for submitting questions. We had some amazing questions. Um, and yeah, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Julia and Alexis. <laughs> All right, so I am Julia. Um, I am going into my second to last semester of nursing school, um, nursing five. So I 
love nursing school. Um, some of my hobbies include running, painting, cooking, listening to music. Um, and once I do graduate, I want to become a nurse practitioner, maybe in the geriatric field. All right. Hi, I'm Alexis. Um, I'm going into nursing six, so I'm in my last semester. I'll be graduating in December 2020. Um, I have worked as a CNA, um, medical assistant, and then this summer I had uh, an internship at Carmano's at their bone marrow transplant um, floor, so that was really exciting. Um, besides that, I was involved with um, my acapella group that I was the president of for a couple years. Um, working as a peer mentor and just like volunteering throughout campus. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited to meet you guys and um, feel free to pop in at any time for any questions. So um, as peer mentors, we are a free resource for any nursing students, pre-nursing or current nursing students. Um, we're here to help you with questions or any hardships that you might have throughout the application process or throughout um, the nursing school process. Um, and we can directly help you, or if we cannot help you, we can help you find the right person to talk to for any of those questions you might have. Certain topics that we have helped with and can help with include nursing related course material, different study techniques you can use for classes, where and how to find help for classes, how to schedule appointments with um, different university um, resources, uh, such as any people you can talk to to help you answer questions, volunteer opportunities, application questions, and externship opportunities when it comes time for that. We can meet um, through Zoom right now, but there will be an email coming out soon talking, telling you guys about my hours and Alexis's hours for the semester. Um, and you will each get Zoom links uh, for how to meet with us and the hours that you can do that during. Okay, so now I'm uh, gonna take over and answer some questions. First, I saw in the Q&A, um, Danielle asked, where did you um, get my CNA and medical assistant? Um, my CNA I got from a little place in Waterford, which is uh, the city next to my hometown. I, the email link, yes, we will send the email link. Um, that was next to my hometown. So you can just look up programs online. As far as the medical assistant, I don't actually have my medical assistant license. They kind of just filled me in um, because I had my CNA and I was a nursing student. So um, can you take nursing classes over the summer to finish the program quicker? Once you're admitted into the program, you are set in the three years. So you can't speed up the classes. You can't take classes over the summer. The only way that you could speed it up is um, possibly by like uh, taking your prerequisites over the summer. Okay, now we'll get to the presentation. What is something you wish you would have known your freshman year? Um, regarding the nursing program, I guess I would, wish I would have known, I guess I wish I would have known that I wanted to be in the nursing program because I started off as a different major. I kind of wish that I would have known right away, but it ended up working out fine and I'm excited uh, to graduate soon and I ended up having a good experience, oh, even though I have an extra semester. Uh, something that I wish that I had known, um, if you do know that you wanna be a nurse, some of the courses that you're taking as prerequisites sometimes feel a little bit daunting and like they won't really relate to nursing. For me, it was organic chemistry and bio and all that. But um, there are some that you'll be taking your freshman year uh, that might just feel like they don't relate, but I can promise you they will and they add up to the bigger picture and help you become a better nurse if that's what you know you wanna do. All right, um, agree with Julia um, on that. Also keep your stuff from anatomy, bio, physio, um, at least like your study guides and stuff. I found that those have been really helpful in my nursing courses. How do you balance your academic work and still make sure to experience your first year of college? All that comes with that. 
Um, so I, I was, a well, I still am a very big planner. I have a planner. I stick to a schedule. Um, all those like golden tips that you've been getting, don't procrastinate. Um, stay in contact with all of your professors. If you have any questions, study groups, if that works for you. Um, just make sure that you stay on top of it and know when to ask for help. Um, I still found that I was able to enjoy myself and have a great college experience, but I was able to enjoy myself um, because I put in a lot of work up front for certain things. So, I agree with Alexis on that. I think uh, it's much easier to enjoy yourself when you know you don't have certain assignments or deadlines hanging over your head. I think for me, I did plan ahead a lot. And I knew that if I wanted to go to this event with my friends or if I wanted to FaceTime my mom during a certain time, I had to get the certain assignments I needed to get done that day beforehand. It's easy to procrastinate when you don't just get it done right away. Um, so I think planning ahead is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And also getting good study habits down while you're in your prerequisites. Um, so that way you're more prepared for nursing school, I think is huge. And you can, you can tell who had their study habits down before they came into the program versus the people who kind of like slacked off and then were kind of hit like once they got into the program, like, oh crap, okay, now I need to study. Studying tips or websites. I live by Quizlet. I do Quizlets for everything. Um, and there's tons of different Quizlets out there that are already pre-made if you don't like making your own. Um, that's just for me though. I think that, like I said, it's important to see what works for you. I oh. also, oh, oh sorry. Ahead. I was also gonna say like certain YouTube channels. Um, Julie, I don't know if you know the one um, nursing one off the top of your head we always recommend, but some YouTube channels are really, really informative about if you're stuck on a certain topic. Yeah, I don't know the exact one, but I do know that when I do have a pro uh, an issue trying to understand something very specific, I will just type that right into YouTube and so many videos will come up. Um, usually people who are current nurses or nursing students helping you out. So it'll be very helpful if you come across that. Um, I also am a big advocate for Quizlet because you can make your own questions and answer things in a way that you understand. And I also think um, getting together with or FaceTiming with other people in the nursing program is another great way because you guys are doing the exact same thing. Um, and people who want to be in the nursing program as your pre-nursing students, um, you're going to be taking the same prerequisites. So FaceTiming and working alongside those students will really help you out, I think. Absolutely. And also, listen to your professors. They're the ones that are making the tests. They're the ones that are grading all of your stuff. If they're telling you to study a certain way, then you should probably at least try it, at least listen to them for, because um, I know like, for example, my physio pro um, professor, he told us to study a very specific way. I followed it and I was golden. Um, whereas, and like farm or something, if I would have studied that way, it would not have made any sense. So like kind of tailoring it to with the information that you need. Okay, sorry. Thanks. I really. agree with that 100%. <laughs> okay, why did you choose nursing? Did you ever doubt your decision? Was there a time where you felt you want to change your major other than nursing? And if so, what made you still stick to nursing major? Um, yes. Pretty much every night before an exam, I felt like I wanted to change my major. Um, <laughs> but I, I personally chose nursing because I was super fascinated by the health sciences. I love the human body. Um, I just thought like medicine was so fascinating. But I also wanted kind of the more humanitarian side relationships and um, working hands-on with people. So I thought that nursing was an incredible like blend of everything and I've um, had experiences in the hospital and everything. So yeah, I thought nursing was great. Did I doubt my decision? Um, I never doubted my decision. I Sometimes I thought that it was a lot harder than I anticipated it was going to be. Um, like for example, like I thought maybe the schooling was harder than I thought it was going 
going to be when I was going into it, but I never really doubted that I wanted to become a nurse. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I would change my major. I think that I, once I graduate, I might want to uh, go to higher education, nurse practitioner, nurse midwife, uh, something like that. But I don't know, with all of the schooling I've had and the uh, job experience I've had, I really love nursing. So I think it's the right fit for me. Yeah, I think um, going into college or maybe it was towards my senior year of high school is when I really knew I wanted to be a nurse. Um, nursing kind of found me. I fell into a position where I was taking care of a family member and the fulfillment I felt from that was just more than anything I felt before. It's such a cool opportunity to get to take care of somebody and everything that comes with it. I think nursing is also just so versatile. I'm someone who changes their mind and likes to try out new things. Um, and with nurse, nursing comes a world of opportunity to be any type of nurse you want, work wherever you want. Um, there's so many different hours that come with it and so many different floors you can work on. So for me, that was another major um, point that really drew me to nursing. I think that I don't think I ever doubted the decision. I agree with Alexis. Um, I was nervous about the challenge, but as you know, now I'm in nursing five and Alexis is in nursing six. It's doable if that's what you want to do. Um, and I don't feel like I have ever wanted to change my major, but I do feel like I definitely lean heavily on the fact that even when you are a nurse, you can change your mind and you can do whatever you want to do. So that's comforting because um, I don't think you'll ever fully be stuck in anything. So yeah, and for me, it was easy to stick to. Okay, what different things can I do during the fall and spring semester to better my chances of getting into the nursing program? Um, so the way that I personally looked at it. Again, I'm not the one who's reviewing your applications, but I saw grades is kind of getting you through the door and then everything else is just extra. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of spots in the nursing program and they, I know that they want to accept everyone, um, but they have to use certain criteria and grades happens to be one of them. So um, what I would recommend is to really, really focus on your classes. Um, especially you have this unique opportunity that it's online now. Um, maybe you can create different resources like Zoom study groups and stuff like that to get through it. Um, but yeah, I would say besides grades and besides working hard in your classes, um, I would say uh, your personal essay. That's what I always focused on in my office hours was people were struggling with or had questions with their personal essay. And I think that that's a really, really important part too, because that's the only thing that you can tell them that's um, like personal to you. Like everything else is just a number or just a job, but um, your personal statement is what you're gonna be able to bring to the program. So I think that people should focus on that as well. I agree 100%. I think it was a great point to bring up that it will look different this semester. So um, utilizing, like Alexis said, maybe doing Zoom study groups rather than meeting up with other people in the nursing program, getting creative in that way. I also agree. I think the essay for me um, was what I saw as like most important for myself. Yes, the grades is also very uh, important, like Alexis said, but showing your passion for nursing and showing that why you think you'd be a great fit to not just nursing in general, but the MSU nursing program. So really having a feel for the mission and the values of the MSU nursing program itself, um, I think will really take you a long way. What are good volunteer opportunities? Do you recommend doing something to work outside of school like CNA training? Um, good volunteer opportunities. I know that uh, this has been talked about a lot, but the current situation with COVID and everything makes uh, volunteering a little bit different. When I was applying to the nursing program and when I was living up there volunteering, I was volunteering at Sparrow and I was also volunteering through um, 
students care, which is was a club up there. Um, but I'm not sure exactly if how that's going to work. But I know that with COVID brings new volunteering opportunities. Uh, one, for example, my roommate was doing, she was answering phone calls about COVID. It was like a COVID hotline. Um, so there's a bunch of different things. And seriously, if you just look up like volunteering near me, there's something that's gonna come up. So um, do I recommend doing something to work outside of school like CNA training? So for me, <clears throat> excuse me, for me, I did CNA training. Let me think. I think I didn't even have my CNA when I was admitted into the program. So it's not like it's completely necessary or anything to um, have CNA. However, I will say that at least in my personal experience, it was apparent that um, I was a lot more comfortable working with the patients in the beginning because I had that experience. So I thought that maybe not to get into the program isn't necessary, but I thought that it was really helpful once we got into the clinical setting because I was already familiar with like the basic um, patient care and everything. So I felt like that was a little bit easier for me. Yeah, I agree with Alexis. I did not come in with my CNA, but I did notice that people who had uh, sometimes did feel a little bit more comfortable around patients at first. For me, what made me more comfortable is uh, in high school, I worked in a daycare and I currently for the past few years have been working at a nursing home. Um, but like we brought up before, it is a pandemic right now. So your comfort level as a pre-nursing student might not be um, allowing you to be able to jump right into those opportunities. Um, I think though that Nursing Student Association might be doing the Zoom uh, meetings for their program. And um, yeah, like I think whatever experience you can get is wonderful. And I don't think that you'll be at a huge disadvantage if you don't have the most experience in nursing school at the time you start. Okay, what is one thing I need to start doing now in order to better my chances of being admitted into nursing school? Um, so I think that what you should, okay, right now, I think that you guys should all try to get in with your advisors. I think that that's very important just to make sure that you're on the right track and that you're taking the correct classes that you need to take um, so that you can apply um, as soon as possible. Um, also, I think buy a planner, do whatever you need to do to start getting organized. You need to start today. And I know that it's, it seems very overwhelming. We're like, you need to do great in all of your classes, but it's very doable as long as you stay on top of it. Um, so I would say just have a good study system going, good support system, and um, reach out to your resources like your advisors, your peer mentors, all that good. I agree with what you said there. I think it's kind of the same thing as just taking those classes seriously, um, getting your grades up, and then really, really just looking inward about why you want to be a nurse and becoming passionate about that. What will I miss out on from all online classes? So actually, very luckily for you guys, um, right now, it doesn't seem like you'll be missing out on that much because your clinicals don't start right away. Your clinicals don't start when you're pre-nursing. You don't even have clinicals, as far as I know, in nursing one. So as, as of right now, um, like your biology, your anatomy and stuff, that was already just uh, like lecture-based classes. So that, um, I guess the only thing with that is that you're going to have more online versus the in-person opportunities. Um, I don't, I wouldn't see it as missing out. Um, I'm sure that all, like professors are still going to have their office hours. It will just be in different ways. So just make sure that you're communicating with your professors and um, with your peers and stuff like that. I don't, um, I think that every, I think everyone will work together really well and everyone at MSU just wants your success. So I think everyone will be okay with online. I agree with that. And I also think one important thing to look out for is 
uh, some of the Facebook groups. So like incoming freshmen, or I don't know which Facebook groups are out there right now that maybe you want to start or join that have to do with pre-nursing students. But um, I, I know I personally met some pre-nursing students in classes. That may be one thing that will be a little bit different online. So maybe finding a new way, um, like I said, whether it be Facebook or through mutual friends, um, a new way to find other pre-nursing students and to communicate with them uh, electronically, virtually, um, I think that would be really beneficial. As I said, knowing other pre-nursing students was really beneficial to me. Is there anything I can do to make my application for the nursing program stand out? I think that Julia and I kind of touched on this um, a little bit earlier, but like I was saying, I think that your personal essay is a really, really good opportunity that they give you to um, stand out because it's the one opportunity that you kind of can go and do whatever you want. And instead of just being like a number or a GPA or something, you're a person with a story, with a passion for nursing. So I think that focusing on that will also do you very well. I agree with that, Alexis. What tips do you have for staying organized and on top of your work? Um, personally, my organization has evolved throughout all of college. I can't say that one thing has worked perfectly well for me throughout like all of the nursing program, except for a planner. Um, having a planner because just due dates and like once you get into the um, nursing program you have like your clinicals and then you have checkoffs and then you have exams and then quizzes and then all the stuff so it can be overwhelming if you don't have it all so I just like having it all laid out in front of me having a planner is really important um, and I think that um, also having time to yourself is important um, if you're gonna say like I'm gonna study Monday through Thursday, whatever, a couple hours. Make sure you still give yourself like a day where you can relax and take care of yourself because if you're burnt out, then you're not gonna be able to get through everything that's expected of you. I agree with that. And I think also um, studying with people is a nice way to be able to like stay social and on top of your work. So you could maybe get on Zoom with somebody and it's kind of like checking two boxes. You're meeting with a friend and you're also studying together. That's one way that I've been able to also, going back to that question, um, have a normal quote unquote college experience. And so I think doing something like that might be um, helpful and staying organized, I think, this semester will be really important to even stay organized on your laptop or your computer, whatever you're working on. So don't forget about maybe making different folders on your desktop uh, pertaining to each class, uh, as opposed to just using like a physical paper planner. I think you're gonna have a lot of online things that you're gonna need to save and store. So making those folders on your desktops, changing colors pertaining to certain classes, maybe doing things like that. I've seen people use different color pens for different classes. Um, and it's just all those little tips to help you stay organized will take you a long way. Um, what advice would you have for me going in? What are some ways that help you keep a positive mindset? Um, so try not to like repeat everything that I've been saying. Something that Julia said made me think, um, I think it's really, really important. Do not see your peers as people that you're competing with. You guys are all trying to succeed in your classes. You guys are all trying to do well. I think it's very important, like Julia said, to create study groups. And um, a lot of things that I found extremely helpful is, hey, I'll make a Quizlet for this chapter. You make a Quizlet for that one. Or here's a Google Doc. I'll do the first half of this. You do the second half of that. Just there's a lot of, um, a lot of times it can get overwhelming. And it's very, very helpful when you do have the people there. So I would say, um, this is, I guess, advice for freshman year, like put yourself out there with your friends, with your peers and classes. Um, as far as keeping a positive mindset, I guess it circles back to um, like having a day or like having a time for yourself because it can be a very stressful um, major. It's also a very stressful career. It's essential that you take care of yourself as well. So make sure you're scheduling in time to see your family, to 
I don't know, whatever you guys like to do, <laughs> watch Netflix or swim or whatever. Um, yeah, Julia, I'm handing it off to you. <laughs> yeah, I just think that um, it's important to know that Yes, while nursing school or even the pre-nursing requisites are very challenging, if you're serious about nursing, uh, it's so worth it. You're not the only one who thinks it's challenging, if you do think it's challenging. And I think it's important to know that you might study, have to study a little bit harder than some of your peers in different types of classes, or not even harder, but just different material. Um, and it's important to remember why you want to do this and just kind of keep that focus and constantly remind yourself why you went into nursing in the first place. Um, I think that's the best motivator. Did you get accepted the first time you applied? Um, yes, I did. I applied, uh, I applied fall semester, so I got accepted for the spring semester. Um, however, this does not matter at all. All of my friends, my cohort, I could not care less, nor do I know whether or not it was the first or second time they applied. All of the nurses that I respect, I don't know if it's the first, if they got accepted to nursing school the first time they applied. Um, I know it does seem like a huge deal and you just wanna get it over with, um, but it's not the end of the world. There's two semesters that you can apply. Um, so just, I would try to focus on just doing your best in all of your classes um, and don't worry about how many times it takes you to get accepted. Yeah, and like Alexa said before, um, don't see your peers as a uh, competition. Sometimes in such a competitive program, it might feel that way, but I know several people who have been accepted the first or the second time um, or, ended up deciding that they didn't really want to do nursing and that's okay too. Um, so I don't think it's something that will be super important down the line, uh, which time you apply that you get accepted. Um, but yeah, no, I think if you want to do nursing, you definitely can do it somehow. What do you think the most important qualifications are for getting into the program? Um, like we've touched on throughout um, today, grades I think are important. Um, personal statement or essay I think is important. Um, I think what's really important though is that you have a passion for this and you keep that passion in the back of your mind, like throughout all of the late nights when you're studying and your friends are going out through like, when you have three, like thousand things to do that week. Um, just, I think that it's very important to know why you're doing this and be passionate and come passionate. Um, and I think that that will get you a long way. I agree, I think that was perfectly said. And uh, now we can start answering some of those um, questions that are coming up in the chat right now. Oh yeah, the Q&A, okay. Have you started preparing for the NCLEX? Yes, anonymous attendee, I have. I just started preparing like two weeks ago. Um, however, I know once, um, once classes start, I will not be studying that much. I know it's very, very common for people to um, graduate and then take like a month or so to study and then take the end class. So I think that I might be putting that off once classes start. But no, don't worry about studying for the end class right now, please, please. Be the love God. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what exactly is the NSA? Um, I think that I saw Crystal say that the president of the NSA will be talking after us, so I'll leave that to her, but it's the Nursing Students Association um, Club on Campus. And can one apply to more than one nursing school? Absolutely. I think that you have to be mindful of which prerequisites each nursing school does require, because um, they do differ, but I have seen uh, some of my friends apply um, 
somewhere else, decided they didn't want to do that anymore, and then come here. I've had, I have current friends in the nursing program who this isn't the first place or the only place that they applied to, um, and I've had friends here who decided to apply somewhere else. So absolutely, I think you can do that. Um, how important do you think extracurriculars are to your nursing application? Um, again, I'm not um, reviewing the applications. I do not make the decision. However, I think that um, anything that you can do to get yourself, um, to set yourself apart from the other applicants because everyone else um, was born to be a nurse, everyone else is um, doing well in their classes. So I guess anything else that you can put in there to set yourself apart. However, it's not a requirement and people have um, gotten to the program without, it just, it truly does depend who you're applying, um, who you're applying with and what experience they have. Thank you. Alexis and Julia, would you mind, um, a question came up that I think would be good for you to talk from your perspective. Can you talk about what the application looks like from the student's end? Oh, okay, um, so from what I remember, I have a terrible memory, but on the College of Nursing website, and it pops up, and there's like five different sections, I think, and like one of them, you insert um, your like experience, and then one of them, you have a spot to enter the answer for the essay prompt, and then another one you have for your references. It's very, very um, straightforward and then there's another section that you have where you put what classes you took and then you fill in the um expected gpa so yeah i didn't have that i didn't struggle filling it out and everything um that was expected of me i felt like i knew going into it going into the application um i will recommend starting that early though there i agree with that and there's definitely there's a there's um in each area on the application, there are ways that you can make yourself stand out. I know that's been like a hot topic today, but when you're talking about, I know there's um, a portion to talk about your uh, extracurriculars and your experience. So just really think about, it doesn't have to be um, a nursing club or volunteering at a hospital. There are some things that you wouldn't think right off the bat relate to nursing, but they do. Uh, for me, it was working at a daycare. For some people, it's babysitting, but make sure you really mention any of those things that you're working with people and that you're caring for people or even being a leader of a sports team. You, for nursing, you do have to be a leader a lot of the time. And so it's not, it doesn't have to be a very straightforward, um, like I said, I volunteered in a hospital or something. It can be really anything that you feel will better prepare you for nursing. So definitely talk about those things on your application. I wanted to point out, um, we had a few questions uh, specifically regarding study tips and different systems using for uh, you can use for studying. Um, and I really wanted to use this moment um, to promote that the peer mentors will have hours, weekly hours that you can sign into their Zoom, li um, Zoom links um, we will send that email out early next week once their clinical schedules are more set in stone. Um, but, but with that link, you can sign in during their office hours and they can walk you through some of the systems they use. So like Quizlet was mentioned, if you've never used Quizlet before, meet with the peer mentors, have them walk you through how to set up an account and how to use the system. Um, they can go over, I mean, if you're having a question about a specific class, like 141, they can maybe go over some different types of study skills and study, uh, studying styles to help you find something that really works for you on a more personalized basis as opposed to the more general responses that they have today. So please utilize, use, utilize our peer mentors throughout the semester. Um, that's what they're here for. And like I said, meeting one-on-one -on -one could be a very beneficial way to, um, to have some, to a more personalized experience based on what you're looking for. Um, one other thing I wanted to remind students to, um, you know, right now everyone's thinking about the traditional admissions for our traditional BSN program. Um, 
we, it is a very competitive program. Yes, um, typically we have about uh, two thirds more applicants than we do spaces. Um, but that does not mean that if you're not admitted that you can never be a nurse. Um, we have other pathways that students can take, including our accelerated program. Um, the accelerated program um, would, is, is something that can apply to after you've earned your first degree, which can be in anything. And we can go over that more specifically um, once you're a little bit more adjusted and at least through your first semester kind of talk how that could work for you. Um, but the accelerated program is something that you would work on um, the prerequisites while you're completing your first degree and then you can apply to after you've earned your first degree and it's a 15 month program to earn your BSN, which is the same degree as a traditional BSN. It's just a different route of getting that. And we do have a lot of students that opt into that route as well. Um, and as mentioned too, um, of course, there's other nursing programs some students might um, decide to apply to in addition to that. Um, we are preparing you for the MSU um, TBSN uh, application now. But if you're not admitted or if you're not feeling very confident about the application process, please meet with advising. We'd love to talk to you about the accelerated program as well. Oh, thank you, Tara. Um, okay, I think we still have a little bit of time. Uh, a good one here. I just saw it says, who, do you, who did you ask uh, for references from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was um, for me, I asked, um, I had my boss at the time um, for my high school job and someone that I did volunteer for, I asked them for a reference also. I think it's just two that you needed, maybe more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, sure one of my friends asked her, um, her church group leader, um, you can really ask anyone who you think can really speak to your abilities and your um, drive to be a good student mm -hmm. yeah i uh i think i asked my boss from my high school jobs it was um as a hostess so it wasn't related to nursing and then i asked um a really close family friend so yeah it can really be anyone it, they just need to be able to attest to your character right. um what other one um it says when did you start your personal essay i I'm very, I like to get things done right away. Um, so I started as soon as I saw that it was posted. I don't remember exactly when it was posted, but that being said, I didn't finish it right away. I let it sit. I came back to it a few days later. Um, I asked a few different people to read it. And uh, we also, I, I don't think I mentioned this out loud on the slide before when I was talking about the peer mentor hours, but we also have an email that will be sent out to you that you can um, reach us that way and we've had people send us their essays um, and we've edited them given some feedback on those so we're also another resource when you do start that essay um, but everyone's different not everybody starts right when they see it I was just on top of that one I guess <laughs> yeah I started I think I don't know maybe a month before it, or I don't know. But either way, I didn't start that early, but I did do the same thing where I wrote a little bit and then I let it sit for a little bit and then I went back to it and stuff. Um, is there a prompt? Was there a prompt? I think that there were like three different prompts. Am I? Yeah, in one essay, um, this most recent one, I think, was something like that where you, it's a pretty general, it says pretty general about why you want to be a nurse um how you'll fit into the program but like i mentioned before it's also very important to know why you want to be in msu's nursing program so not just any nursing program but maybe that your family all went to michigan state or um you like the way that our clinicals are run or something like that i think um, it's important to know why this program specifically uh, is for you um Start of classes for second semester, just look up MSU, like schedule, academic, something. I think it's <laughs> January 11th is when we start again. Okay, that sounds right. <laughs> How are clinicals run? Okay, um, so 
it, oh, I think we're running out of time, but I know this is the fun part. So really quick, each semester starting in nursing, either two or three, you get a clinical group with eight people in it. Then you get assigned to a place in Michigan. You get to fill out a preference form, but sometimes it's not always honored because they have a lot of different things that they have to fill out for like their clinical requirements. So anyway, you can go anywhere in Michigan with your eight people and you usually go about once a week and you go and you get to like kind of shadow a nurse or work with a nurse. It kind of depends on like what your clinical instructor does or what the setting um, of that particular clinical is. Um, there's OB, PEDS, med surge, psych. So you get tons of different experiences and it's super, super fun. Um, and yeah, if you want to talk about it anymore, please find us in our hours. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much, Julia and Alexis. Um, and again, we will be sending that email very soon, um, early next week. So look out for peer mentor hours um, and stop by um, anytime. We look forward to meeting you. Um, thank you, Michael. Thank you all. I really appreciate that. Um, uh, now, Chris, uh, Captain Kristen Kalo and Captain Starletta Martin are joining us, um, <clears throat> representing the United States Air Army ROTC. Uh, in 2019, to meet the growing demand of nurses in the military, the Army ROTC and the College of Nursing um, partnered to offer a limited number of seats to, um, in a conditional admissions, um, it, through conditional admissions to the traditional BSM program. So um, really, as long as students meet the minimum requirements to get into the College of Nursing, um, we, we offer this opportunity to uh, those students. Um, Captains, uh, Kalo and Martin, uh, the students, oh, sorry, Captains Kalo and Martin, uh, will talk to you more about the opportunities offered by the Army ROTC. <clears throat> and uh, uh, Captains, um, the students may utilize the Q&A at the bottom of the screen to ask questions. Um, I can also read them to you at the end if that makes it a little bit easier, um, if you'd like. Okay. Uh, yes, thank you for giving us this um, opportunity to come and speak to the College of Nursing today. As he said, I'm Captain Kalo, and this is my counterpart, Captain Martin. Captain Martin. And our current role, um, we are seventh grade ROTC uh, nurse counselors. So if you guys enroll in the program, you'll be seeing some of us. Um, sir, were you able to get my PowerPoint up? I haven't received it yet. Uh, okay. If not, I can just turn my phone around and I, I have it on my screen. If this allows me to do that. Oh, here we go. So I apologize for having to do it this way, but um, I was not able to pull it up on my government phone. So thank you and welcome um, to the Army Nurse Corps. So our mission of the Army is to provide responsive, innovative, and evidence-based nursing care to enhance readiness, preserve life, and um, function and promote health and wellness for all those entrusted into our care. Um, we use cutting edge technology, things that you may never see on the civilian side. We also utilize all of our resources, um, which you'll learn later as a clinical nurse specialist, they do our research to make sure um, that we're promoting a new change, a new culture into the hospital. So these are some of the duties that you would have as a nurse corps officer. Um, we promote patient-centered care through the organization of resources for patients and their families. You'll command a shift on a nursing unit um, that you could be part of a field hospital or for an installation medical um, activity. So when, you, when I say field hospital, it, it's kind of like, you guys might be too young for this, but MASH, when you go out into the field and, and you're in the tents, 
or an installation, um, which you guys will be doing your clinical rotations in. You'll supervise all nursing care during your shift at all levels of command. Um, and this bottom picture is of myself and some of my civilian counterparts that I worked with for the last three years. You'll learn that your civilians are the backbone of the hospital um, and they are just a wealth of knowledge. Uh, the lady in the back, I think, has been working there for almost 18 years. So how does the Army differ? So as a nurse in the, um, as a nurse in the Army Corps, you're going to have a, an extreme different patient population. You're going to build camaraderie. You're going to have different unique leadership opportunities while serving your country, professional growth, opportunities, uh, whether it's in the clinical settlement, clinical um, aspect or leadership development. There's many professional bonuses that go along with being in the nurse corps. Challenging job with increased responsibility. Opportunity to travel the world and you can get a new assignment every two to four years. So if traveling is something that you want to do, I have in my short eight years of being in the military, I've seen a lot of the country on the military's dime. Housing allowance. So depending on where you live, the Army will pay for all of your housing. So that'll include utilities and all of that in that lump sum. You get low cost life and dental insurance. You get 30 days of le paid leave every single year. And then there's retirement benefits after you hit 20 years. Um, this is me and some of what I call our battle buddies to, my, to the right. And if you look closely, that's um, one of the generals that had come to visit to see what we were doing in the field hospital that we set up in the middle of the desert in California. I know people say that field work is hard, but if you see those smiles, we all loved what we were doing. So this is kind of what um, ROTC nursing looks like. So your MS1 year, your freshman year, you're basically going to get um, understanding of the language, the different language that military uses, um, just to kind of give you a gradual step um, in this direction. Your sophomore year, you're going to go to a basic camp to give you more of a base off of that MS1 year. Then your junior year, we go to what's something called an advanced camp. And this is where you're expected to be at, at the top of your game. Nursing summer training program, NSTP, we'll discuss that a little bit later. And then your senior year, we prepare you to come into the Army as, a, as an Army nurse. And this is me as a cadet. So this is about 10 years ago. I was lugging around 40 pounds, and we did about an eight-mile ruck march. Anybody can do it. Look at that smile. <laughs> Let's see here. So this is um, what I was talking about on the previous slide, our basic advanced camp. Um, lead, there's different leadership training courses. National Advanced Leadership Camp. It's not a boot camp. It just prepares you how to become a leader in the nurse officer world. So we're going to evaluate basic military skills and how you lead. And you will receive pay for those 28 days during summer months. Again, why Army ROTC? Many advantages. You, you learn invaluable leadership skills that prepare you for any future that, that you see. Hands-on experience in the NSTP summer training program. That's, I believe, on the next two slides. And we can provide financial assistance for your entire college. Um, this is me at a live tissue lab. You got to dissect a pig and learn um, how the heart and the lungs work together. So here's some scholarship requirements. You have to be a US citizen, enrolled in an accredited BSN program, have a minimum 3.0 GPA, minimum SAT and ACT scores. Um, we do require that you are physically fit or motivated to get fit under the age of 31 and good moral character. So this is um, the program that I was talking about before, the Nursing Summer Transition Program. 
NSTP. This is what you would do after your junior year. Again, you would get three weeks paid to do this. So what you do is, is you pick a duty station that is <clears throat> um, that, that allows this and you go and you follow a, a mentor for 28 days and you get to see what life is like as an officer. You're treated like an adult, you're treated as if you already have a nursing license and, and you get to see the world through somebody else's eyes basically. You get more opportunities than your civilian counterparts would. And there are 17 different locations, four overseas and 13 in the continental US. So this here, that picture to the left, um, that is me with my NSTP preceptor. So that was almost nine years ago. And to the right, that was taken about three weeks ago. Her and I are still battle buddies. We are still best friends. And she still mentors me throughout my entire career. Other opportunities you may get, this is um, myself and the rest of my battalion on the Seattle um, football field. And we were doing COVID uh, preparation at that time. So once you graduate, these are the locations that you could choose from all around the country and even Germany. So if you like to travel, you can choose anywhere you'd like to go. Once you graduate, we put you into something called Clinical Nurse Transition Program. Now this is a buffer from once you graduate to when you hit the ground running at your first duty station. When you're a civilian, I think you get between two to four weeks of um, mentorship. With the Army, you get six months of preceptorship with one-on-one -on -one orientation with the preceptor. So it goes in three phases. You'll do orientation for a few months, and then you'll get to go through the rest of the hospital, whether you wanna do ICU, the OR, the ER, anything you'd like to do, you can go and, and visit those locations. And then you come back to what we call clinical immersion for about another month, and then we, we set you free by yourself as a nurse. So you get six months of training with the military before you are independent. And this is me on the right with when I graduated CNTP, um, and that was uh, my boss. They're, they're very proud when you graduate because they're, they're welcoming you to the floor. Typical jobs through the ranks. As you gain rank, you'll get more responsibility. You'll start off as a staff nurse after you graduate CNTP. Then you become what's a charge nurse. You're an extension of the boss when the boss isn't there. And then eventually be, you become the boss, which we call in military the clinical OIC or officer in charge. And then you become a, you can become a faculty or instructor. As the picture on the right, um, with my master's in nursing education, I was able to teach um, on my own at the LPN schoolhouse. Um, and then you can go do recruiter, ROTC nurse counselor, which is currently what myself and Captain Martin are doing. There's other jobs out there. You can go be a White House nurse, um, which is a very prestigious pr um, position. Then you go on to becoming um, section supervisor, department chief, those are later on, deputy commander for all of nursing, and then potentially the hospital commander. So these are some of the Army benefits. The experience that you gain, it, that you gain is um, unprecedented. The medical care, you never have to worry about medical care. Uh, we talked about the housing allowance um, that they give you and it's based on your living area. So the more expensive the area, the more money that you can get. Relocation allowance. So every time that you move, the army will pay you and move you them themselves. Um, and then to touch on again, 30 days of paid vacation annually. So this is the military pay scale. So initially when you come in, you will start out at $39,444. Now that's your base pay. That does not include the BAH or the, um, the BAS, which is the subsidized for, for food. And that is all non-taxable. So that is why it doesn't show in the military pay scale. And every year and every rank that you gain uh, is more money. So at four years, you become a captain, 
you're making $70,000 plus the housing and the food allowance. Um, just to show that we do have fun, this is me getting promoted in Vegas with my entire family there. So there are many opportunities in the military. Professional development. So there is always professional development and room for improvement in, in the military um, army organization. They are always striving so that you can enhance your education and, and keep reaching for excellence. You can also then specialize in different areas. Currently, Captain Martin and I are both um, ICU specialties, but we also offer specialties in OBGYN, emergency trauma, the OR, psych, and nurse case manager. Here to the right is my class graduating about three years ago. We were at San Antonio Hospital. And this here was one of my best friends getting promoted and we got to fly around my Mount Rainier. And that's all I have. What are, what are your questions? So if you question And if you want any more information, I was going to, I apologize. I can leave the screen up. So if you ever want to reach out to my office, my cell, or uh, my email, and please go ahead. What, what were the questions? I apologize. Yeah. So there were three questions that came up. <clears throat> um, how does a student receive um, an ROTC scholarship? They are asking, do they have to apply and how? So I want you to go and talk to um, the ROTC uh, leadership. They will start you in classes, um, and then and then you have to work to to see if that you can earn one. Basically, um, they're not just going to give them out to anybody. They want to they want you to show them that you have what it takes to be an army officer. Um, you go in, you do the PT, you you go to all of the classes, and and you show that this is something that you really want. So that's pretty much how you you start um, gaining for the ROTC scholarships. The other question that came up, it, is the NSTP only for students who are in ROTC or can anybody who's a nursing student uh, pursue that opportunity? That is a, a great question, thank you. No, it is only for ROTC enrolled junior cadets. Um, it is an opportunity only afforded to them. So it is 28 days in a hospital that you get to follow and shadow um, a nurse that has probably been doing this for at least a minimum of, of 10 years. So that experience is, is only offered to those in the nursing program. It is very, it's invaluable to say the least. Thanks. Um, are there any opportunities to do Zoom calls to discuss Army ROTC in a one-on-one -on -one setting? That would have to be something that we set up. If you um, email or call, I can do it because currently right now I, I'm utilizing Zoom through my personal cell phone. But if that is something that a student wanted to discuss, yeah, just, just email me and we can absolutely set something up to go in further if you would like. And the other question I have is something about the specific uh, partnership that we have, so I can follow up with that student. Um, okay, great. The, the other thing um, that I want to mention is that for all the students, I will send information about both of our ROTC, ROTC, uh, ROTC partnerships uh, this afternoon so that you have the contact information for um, those who are here at the university and um, I'll make sure to include uh, um, Captain um, Kalo and Captain uh, Martin's information as well. That sounds great, thank you. And again, I, I apologize that my slides weren't up and that I had to utilize my cell phone like this. I literally, it just popped up, I just got your email. <laughs> I figured. I figured. <laughs> no problem. Um, thank you so much to both of you for um, joining us today. Absolutely. If you have any more questions, please don't um, hesitate to reach out. I will do the best 
that I can to answer any questions. So I'm excited to looking forward to meeting some of you guys and gals. All right, so um, next, I um, this past spring, we extended the conditional admissions opportunity to students um, in the Air Force ROTC program. Captain Caitlin Woodley and Cadet Hannah Kaler um, will talk to you more about the opportunities offered through the Air Force ROTC. Uh, Captain Woodley and Cadet uh, Kaler, the students may use the Q&A to ask questions if you'd like to monitor that and answer questions as they arise. Oh my gosh, I was muted the whole time. Excuse me, I'm still getting <laughs> used to this. Uh this awesome Zoom format. So it's a great way to connect with y'all, but it definitely is not my first nature. Um, I have Cadet Hannah Kaler here with me. She is a current nursing student and also a recent graduate of our field training, which is our uh, summer program, an intensive summer program we put our cadets through in their uh, sophomore to junior summer. Uh, she just got back with top honors, so very proud of her. Uh, we're just here to answer your questions, any that you have, and uh, provide you feedback on information on the Air Force ROTC program. I am going to just kind of piggyback off of the awesome slides that Captain Kalo had um, on her on her Zoom call and let you know that a lot of our programs in the Air Force ROTC are very similar to the Army. So you are going to get those 30 days of paid vacation. You're going to get assignments that are two to four years all across the country and overseas. You're going to have opportunities in the summer to participate in summer um, immersion programs to better equip you to be a nurse in the Air Force. And additionally, uh, we provide you with a competitive wage that has those sustenance and housing allowances attached onto it. And it only gets better as you promote. So um, if there's any questions specifically for the Air Force ROTC that I can answer for you all, I would love to do that. Uh, one of the big things I want to point out is that in the Army and the Air Force, there's a lot of cultural differences. So, you know, if you are looking at joining the military, I encourage you to try and um, maybe Google a little bit or ask friends, family that have been in the service to try to sort those things out because it's very important to join the military branch that is going to suit your lifestyle. Um, here in the Air Force, we care a lot about individuals, families, and uh, home lives. We like to promote family first, and we really do our best to keep uh, families happy. You know, in the Air Force, we, we have the individual, but we also have the family. So if there's any questions that I can answer for y'all, please just put them in the chat. Hannah, did you have anything you wanted to add? I guess I can add a couple of things, but basically the ROTC program for me has been super beneficial. I'm a current junior here at Michigan State and I'm a nursing three student, so I'm kind of in the program for a little bit here. Um, some good opportunities that I've gotten just with ROTC was that I got to do a summer professional development course, which basically means that I got to go to a base. So I went to Travis Air Force Base in California for two weeks and I got to actually shadow nurses in the Air Force um, as part of just as personal development and stuff like that. So there's also really good opportunities outside of just the benefits that have already been talked about in terms of scholarships and kind of a really good segue into getting any sort of like, like advanced degrees that you would like. So if you want to join the program, there's also that option that you can actually like be a nurse for a second in the summer. So if you have any personal questions about how a student in ROTC works with nursing and ROTC and kind of balancing both, just let me know and you can put questions in the chat as well, but just here to help. Hannah, there's actually a question for you already in the chat. It says, what made you choose the Air Force over the Army? Um, for me, I chose the Air Force because I really want to be a flight nurse as like an end goal. And the Air Force has a really good segue into flight nursing as we kind of are really big about being in the air. So 
Um, that was really my main draw. And my dad worked with a lot of people at his fire department who were in the Air Force and they loved it. So basically, it just kind of what I grew up around, people talking about that stuff. But I'm super excited. And if you want to do flight nursing, you should look into it. It's super fun. Uh, the Air Force provides lots of opportunities uh, similar to the Army where we do OBGYN, OB we do flight nursing, um, we do trauma care, ER nursing, you know, the gambit of nursing um, specialties. So that is available to you in the Air Force as well as the Army. Hannah, I have a question. How, um, could you tell students how you um, manage both um, your schoolwork as a nursing student and your uh, commitments to the ROTC? Yes, so definitely if you wanna join ROTC, it's gonna be an additional commitment to the already busy nursing schedule as I'm sure you all have heard from this colloquium. Um, however, my um, ROTC cadre have always been super respectful of the fact that this is my career path and this is where I wanna go. So when when it comes to nursing and ROTC, nursing really is the priority because the mission is to commission, as sometimes we say. So you're going to commission into the Air Force as a nurse, hopefully. So really, nursing has been the priority. But everyone's super respectful of that. Like I said, you get really good opportunities with ROTC. So I've, I've never had any issues really juggling both. I've been able to join the drill team as like an extracurricular ROTC and still be able to manage everything. So pretty much you're gonna be doing your normal nursing stuff. I've got all my nursing friends. And then on top of that, I have a great family in the Air Force ROTC program where I met some of my best friends and everyone's super supportive. So it's very manageable. Just to piggyback off of a little bit of what Hannah said, we do our best to understand that your uh, nursing classes are not going to typically line up with a lot of our standard ROTC classes. So we do our best to work with you to maybe do an alternative lab solution to look at moving class times around to help. Uh, we do expect you to put your all into the ROTC program and do your best to attend what you can attend, but we are flexible and will work with you. All right, unless anybody else has any questions, I don't mean to make this short and sweet, but I definitely don't want to um, double tap on information you already provided by the Army ROTC. Um, I know that um, you, my information will be available to you in my email. Um, additionally, I can also have my telephone uh, number available to you as well. And if you have any questions for Cadet Kaler, I'm sure she would love to field some of those as well in the future. Anna, would you mind if I provided your information to uh, on the email as well if students have questions for you specifically? Yes, of course. My email is always open, so feel free. Thank you. Thank you both for uh, joining us today. I, I really appreciate having this opportunity for the students to hear about all of everything that, that your program offers. Yes, thank you so much for inviting us. All right, so, um, the Michigan State University College of Nursing has an active chapter of the of NSA or uh, Nursing Student Association known as uh, oh, the local chapter meets approximately three times per semester and is open to both pre-nursing and nursing students. Uh, the chapter is involved in many activities including um, community service projects, um, legislation, uh, continuing education, uh, Faith May is the current president of MSU's chapter and is here to tell you a little bit more about the organization. Um, Faith, um, the students will probably uh, be sending things in chat, so um, if you'd like, I can certainly um, give you, um, I can certainly either read them out to you or I would be happy also to um, to uh, have you answer them as you're as you're going through things. So I'll let you choose the format, but let me know if you want me to read them to you. Yeah, okay, great. Um, I can, I've got the chat bar open next to me. So if the chat comes up, then I'd be more than willing to answer it. Um, if I do miss it, just stop me and let me know um, if I missed it and I'll try to get to it. So yeah, are we ready then? Yeah, go right ahead. Okay, great. So as Michael stated, um, my name is Faith May. 
I'm the president of NSA and I'm a senior in the College of Nursing. So I've been in the NSA for three years now um, and it has become my favorite organization that I've ever done in college and I've done a lot of things. Um, excuse me, I have a cat also and she might knock over my laptop so please don't mind her, I'm so sorry. Um, and it's become my favorite organization for so many reasons. We are really involved in professional development of nursing and um, we provide a lot of opportunities to develop yourself as a nursing student and hopefully as a future nursing professional. Um, we offer a lot of networking opportunities and community service and all types of things that you can imagine. Um, as Michael stated, we do meet about three to four times a semester depending on how um, active we will be in December. So we meet the second Tuesday of every month. And because you guys are already all declared pre-nursing majors, we have your information and we will be able to send you an email once we have our first meeting. And um, so that first meeting is gonna be September 15th at 7.30 p.m. And like I said, we will be sending out an email that will um, allow you guys to join the meeting. And then from there, uh, that's how you become a member. And um, actually, I just saw this um, question. So uh, how can you join the NSA? And that is by attending our very first meeting on September 15th at 730. Like I said, you'll get an email about that. So no worries there. And there are not a limited, um, a limited amount of people. We accept people year round. So if you're not sure about joining in September and you want to get a little more used to school, like kind of get in the setting and get used to it, we are more than willing to accept you throughout the year. So if you want to join October, November, no problem at all. Um, we just have an active five point system and the five point system is you have to achieve five points to become an active member and two of those have to be community service opportunities. Now, unfortunately, we aren't really sure how a lot of our um, uh, community service opportunities are gonna look at the moment, just because we haven't met with our faculty coordinator and we haven't had an e-board meeting yet, but all of that information will be, um, will be sent out to you guys uh, on that September 15th meeting. Um, the next question is, do you have to be accepted? Do you have to be accepted into the nursing program before joining? No, we accept pre-nursing students and nursing students. So if you aren't in the College of Nursing yet, we are more than willing to have you in. Um, a lot of our activities are um, overtaken by pre-nursing students because you guys are so interested and um, eager to join. And so we rely heavy on you guys because you guys are so active and so excited to be a part of it. So we love having pre-nursing students. Um, I'm trying not to word vomit at you guys, but um, some of the opportunities that we provide are community service, like I stated before. We have nursing instructors come in and talk. Um, Patrick Crane talks about the, Lond the London study abroad. We have professional career development people come in. We provide you opportunities to go to our conventions. Um, convention is a big event where uh, a lot of nurse professionals, nursing students, nurse educators, uh, advocates come in and have little sessions, little breakout sessions, and it's a really great way to network. And we go every year to the Michigan Convention and the National Convention. Unfortunately, last year nationals were canceled, and so I can't really speak too much on that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a lot of information I threw at you guys. Um, and so if you guys have more questions, let me know if, um, yeah, oh, sorry, there's a question. How many people are, how many people are in NSA? I am not 100% sure. I don't have that hard data right now, but there are about 40 students in some cohorts and 80 and other and not all of them join. I would say we have probably like 200 students minimum, I believe. Um, if you guys want that hard data, I will definitely, 
I can find that for you guys and find that out, but that's what I'm thinking at the moment. And the majority of our students are pre-nursing students. Uh, the next question is, will there be a link for the meeting sent out to everyone or do we need to register? Um, also, is there a website where we can learn more about NSA? So there will be a link sent out um, in an email. So we have our eboard member whose name is Emma. She's our secretary and she handles a lot, all of our email and she has all of your emails because you're declared pre-nursing. So there will be a link sent out to you guys and you're just able to join it through there. And we don't have a website, but we do have an Instagram and a Facebook and you can just search up um, MSU NSA or uh, that's our Instagram and then Facebook just search up um, MSU Nursing Student Association. And once you become a member, um, we also have a D2L page. So it's a D2L page, just like your classroom pages. And that's where we post all of our information. So it's one nice, easy space for you to have our volunteering membership. Anything you might need is posted through there. And you'll be able to access that after you become an NSA member, um, after we provide that information to you on the 15th of September. So I don't know if there's any more questions, anything you guys want me to answer. I know that I kind of threw a lot of information at you guys. So, um, and I might not have covered everything. So please just go ahead and ask any questions. Let me know anything you might want to know. So this question is, if we attend a meeting, does that mean we have to join? Not necessarily, no. Um, you don't have to become an active member. That's only if you want to. Um, you can come to our meetings and just learn about NSA, learn about what we're having presented. Um, you absolutely don't have to join if you don't want to. You're more than welcome to just come to the meetings without being an active member, for sure. Um, what if NSA meets at a time you have a Zoom meeting for class? No problem. You can still become an active member if you so choose. Um, we we allow you to um excuse me sorry we have our d2l page and you can become an active member through other ways and you do not have to come to the meetings to be an active member oops sorry um it's no problem at all so no worries there the the next question is the instagram talks about a meeting from tomorrow from five to eight what would be talked about during this so monday tuesday and wednesday of this week we were at um participation and so participation is a short version of this so since you're already here right now you don't have to go tomorrow um participation is just a way for freshmen to look at all of the clubs at msu so um it's just a additional, it's kind of a shorter one, a more intimate one-on-one -on -one thing. So if you wanted more intimate questions and you wanted to spend more time talking to someone, you're more than willing to go there. Um, they're gonna talk about the same things I'm talking about here. So if you find out you have more questions, you're more than welcome to join that tomorrow, but you don't have to if you don't want to. The next question is, is NSA affiliated with the College of Nursing? Yes, we are affiliated with the College of Nursing. Um, we have a uh, faculty coordinator, um, Marcy, and she heads up the PEDS program or the, the PEDS course at MSU. So um, that's how we have our involvement there. And yes, so in short, yes, we are affiliated with College of Nursing. Anything else in general? I know, like I said, I've, I've talked a lot of words at you guys. I know it's a lot to take in, especially since you're freshman right now and it's it's like scary and everything's so different right now so for sure just let me know any questions If not, do you have any parting words of wisdom for them, Faith? Um, yeah, so 
a couple of things. As a freshman, I know it's super scary right now, especially how competitive college of nursing is. I'm just, I just want you guys to know that you can do it. It's very stressful, but I believe in all of you and you're here for a reason. And if you need anything at all, if you join NSA and you just need advice and everything like that, we offer a peer mentor program. Um, we are more than willing to help you out. Um, Michael, you're more than willing to share my email with them if they have any questions about um, the College of Nursing, about NSA in general. Um, please feel free to reach out and we, um, we look forward to having you in NSA. And even if you don't want to, um, I wish you all the best of luck. Study hard, enjoy. And I've got a couple more questions as that came up. Um, so this one's, uh, I'm currently declared as a different major, but planning on switching to nursing, can I still look into NSA and come to the meetings? Yes, even if you are not um, a nursing or pre-nursing major, we accept all majors. Um, while we are majority nursing, we are more than willing to accept you. So for sure, come to the meeting and um, we will definitely be more than willing to have you. Since you're not um, declared as pre-nursing, we will, get the information out on Facebook. That way people are able to join that way. So we'll for sure get you the information. Thank you for your question. And so I guess in parting, um, what I will say, cause this is, uh, this question is a good one. Can you repeat exactly what NSA does again and what they're involved in? So NSA is an academic and professional organization that provides um, opportunities to both pre-nursing and nursing students. Again, like I said, professionally and socially. We provide community service opportunities, we provide networking, we provide education, and just overall a fun experience for nursing students. So we meet the second Tuesday of every month, and each month we go over different topics. So in October, we're gonna be going over professional development um, because we're gonna be having a career fair, and, though, and we will be able to discuss how to present yourself online, how to set up LinkedIn, things like that. So we provide a lot of education in those ways. And unfortunately, because this year is online, um, we can't do as many things as we, norm as we normally do. Uh, I hope that answers your question. When you come to our meeting, hopefully, on September 15th at 7.30, I know I've said that so many times, but I just really want everyone to get involved. Um, we will go more in depth in, into what this year will look like. So. I guess that's my last question and I wish you guys all the best of luck and um, if you need anything please don't hesitate to reach out the College of Nursing staff is so helpful and NSA and all the nursing students are here for you always so have a great year. Thank you Faith mm -hmm. um, and, and thank you all for um, participating today in our, our um, colloquium. Um, again if you have questions as you're getting ready to start uh, your first year or as things, as, as you trickle into uh, questions, um, as you begin your uh, first couple of weeks of classes, please do not hesitate to reach out to the advisors or myself. Um, otherwise, we wish you the best of luck and um, we'll see you as um, the year goes on. Good luck.